So it looks like you have a history of game design even before you touched Dark Wizard games and got yeah. into the RPG industry. Had you been playing D&D this whole time up until you actually got started making the stuff or had you dropped off for a bit? I had dropped off because I had stopped playing maybe around 1991 or two or somewhere around that time. And I kind of had dropped out. And then, uh, but I still always was interested and I would still try to follow the news about it. And I still kept all my books and everything. You know what I mean? And I still had the kind of the passion for that subject matter. I just hadn't been playing it. And then it wasn't until around 2003, one of my girlfriends at the time, I stopped at the hobby store and suddenly I saw the Goodman games like Dungeon Call Classics or whatever thing. And I was like, with the yellow stripe. I was like, what? What? What the hell is this? Whatever. What do you mean? What? You can make it a, an adventure like this again? Huh? How? And then I bought it and I was all excited to read it. And I read it and I was like, it was just kind of boring, whatever it was. You know what I mean, it looked like it was going to be more exciting than it was. Yeah. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed it so that I reread it again or something. Was like, I don't think you I did. Something. But anyways, I felt that it didn't live up to its cover hype. The yes. on the cover. I all remember when the modules were 20 levels deep and those you know, NPCs would be killed. And that's how I wrote my thing was still similar to that one. But in mine, I feel like I actually followed through with it. But, but anyways. Uh, so was your inspiration for getting into actually making and publishing adventures? Was it looking at that product, seeing how unsatisfactory it was and saying, I can do better? Or was it some whole other inspiration? Oh, that's a good question. So I don't know. It was just something. Well, that too, I felt, well, that wasn't very good or something. Or that wasn't very exciting, I felt. But I liked what they were, the concept of doing a retro module and then kind of talking about it in that third person. Like, remember when there was the NPC skill? All the stuff that was that we were used to. So that's probably what kind of planted the seed there, because that was around the time, like I said, when I was starting to think about that. Okay, well, if you can do this, maybe I can do one. And I started to try to do one. I wrote two. One was like a monster manual thing, and the other one was like an adventure. But at the time, this was 2004, when mm -hmm. I was just using Microsoft Word. I wasn't using the right program. I was just using clip art off of the internet, like the Renaissance picture that doesn't make any sense. And right. the map, I think was very primitive. It just didn't look right. I made every single mistake in the book. Not an interesting story, not in a proper title. I didn't have the yellow stripe thing. I tried to do something different or like a, the ones that came out after the yellow stripe where they had the stripe at the top or something. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Second edition ones or something. Is that what those are? It just didn't look right. And this didn't wasn't right at all, actually. Although some of the monsters that I wrote in that monster book ended up making it into my Monsters of Mayhem book, but as refined and done better with professional art. So that's how I suddenly said, okay, let me try to do one. And I tried back then for that, and I, it was a failure, because I, I didn't try to sell it even. I didn't go as far as to selling it. drive through RPG was around, but I just felt this is not professional looking. So I threw in the towel with that, and then just kind of forgot about it. But I still would keep modules. I still kept buying retro modules. I bought all the Goodman Games modules. I bought all the way up to like number 50 or something, I think. Those Goodman Games classic. So I still kept in that scene. I'd still for eBay for retro modules, I'd find some obscure one because you know how it is. Like generally, one guy writes one at some point, and maybe it sells a little bit, but then he gives up on it or something. Or maybe if they're lucky, they make two. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a few guys now that are Nelson Bailey. He's doing really well. He's got like ten books now. I think he's coming up on ten maybe or so. He does the Dungeon Delve series. So he's doing well. And I know Kevin Watson made up like five so far or something, five modules. So around 2012, when I discovered Kickstarter, I said, hey, um, maybe I can make a module again. Only this time I'll hire professional artists and map makers and people like Alan that are professional layout people. Because when we were, when Alan and I were doing the software project for Warner Brothers, I had also developed my own social network at the time. I had literally programmed a social network just like Facebook, only it wasn't called Facebook. It was called UpCrowd, which is a stupid name, but it was the only name we had. Bottom line is a social network. Make profiles, make pages. Right. It, it was a think of a combination between MySpace and Facebook at the time, where you could actually have your profile, but then you could make a page like in Facebook, but you could trick it all out like with graphic and stuff like MySpace. Like MySpace. Gotcha. So Alan knew I knew Alan knew how to make books because we had made a, a book for like a investment plan back then. So I said, hey, Alan, I'm going to make this book. It's the D module. Can you do the, uh, the uh, layout? He's like, yeah, we can do that. And I went on the Kickstarter and I started backing people's projects. That's how I found people like Brian McCraney and you know, Alyssa Faden to do maps. And I found all the people that I would need to, to do with a professional part. So I said, okay, let's try to do this. And then I launched the first Kickstarter. And because I had money from the computer job, I was able to hire Jeff D to do my cover. So I knew at least I'd have the cover done and I knew what it would look like as far as that. And that's how I started with that one, raised the money on Kickstarter. And yeah, I still insist that that's probably the best collection of 
art in a module I've seen. So the sense I'm getting is that you got into the RPG design and publishing industry because it was something that you enjoyed. Now you just wanted to do more with it. Am I reading that right? Yes. Let's just say there was some kind of calling or something. You know what I mean? I always liked those modules from the 80s, even though I hadn't played since then. You know what I mean? Right. But I always kept them. It was just something about them, something to do with maybe the look and feel or the, the, the notion of each one being a unique story or something. I don't know how to explain it. Some sort of calling or something. You know they what were mean? compelling. I, and I've compelling. been reading and reviewing some of the originals just within the past few years. And they're still good. They are still standard bearers of quality. And that's one of the right. things that impresses me about the original writers like Gary Gygax, Alan Hammack, and so on and so forth. When they got started in making these products, these modules, they were already so good at it. Like usually people screw up a lot before they get it right. And right. kind of like what you said with your first module, it was a great learning experience, wasn't it? It was. Right? And even in coffins, there's a lot of mistakes that I need to fix. But go ahead. But yes, but definitely yeah. the first one was nothing but trouble. Right. And so that, you know, was it against the studying of the Hill Giant Chief and the entire Giant series, you could pick that up and play it today and there's still depth to it, but he uses so few words to get across so much adventure potential. I mean, it's just amazing. Like, how do you start off with some of the best that will ever be made? You know, I'm very impressed. And so the fact that you're adding your own contribution to the corpus of RPG modules, love it. Thank you so much. And, and yeah. it's a privilege and an honor to be able to do this to the extent that I'm even able to do it. I mean, I'm only surviving off this based on the small group of people that like my work, apparently enough to keep wanting to buy it. And I keep trying to make sure it's everything I do is always done to the best I can do, even though now I'm outputting a lot more. Before, I used to only be able to put out one module per year when Al and I were doing some of the first works on this stuff. We were only able, able to get like one thing out a year. Now, I'm getting out like almost 10 to 14 or more per year between their five Ivy counterparts and their first edition version. So it's quite unbelievable, but I'm getting better at it. And as I do that, I'm able to keep the quality up and keep it going for as long as, as I can, I guess. I mean, as long as I have stories and ideas. A friend of mine had said, well, you should just keep it moving 12 modules. I was like, well, why would we want to you know, limit it to just 12? You know, And then the response was, well, does, does anybody care about Goodman Games number 62 or something? Which is a funny response to have that good, very good friend of mine. But I was like, well, let's keep going until I run out of ideas or something. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Yeah. Go so until you're point. done. Yeah, go until you're done. It's like a TV show. You know what I mean? You want to keep going as far as you can take it. Like Seinfeld, they got out of their ninth year at whatever 200 episodes, whatever the hell it was. They're at the top of their game. They were at the top of their game when they stopped because they were worried about starting to, to, to fall plus quality. Got like 50 titles on the list so far but I'm just going through every one. Like, okay, this one will be next. This next. And uh, like the stuff. So, just keep going through it. And then I keep thinking of new titles and new concepts, especially for the post-apocalyptic stuff too. That's a whole other list. I've got like 20 things on that one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm lucky and blessed that I'm able to do this. So I, I think it's the economy right now is in a tough spot because each one of my latest books, they should be doing better, you know what I mean, on the with the Kickstarters. But I think it's just the economy right now. I saw a news headline just earlier today that 50% of people polled would go on a summer vacation if the economy wasn't so bad and they weren't so broke. In the movie theaters, there's quite a few good movies that have come out and they've disappointed. Well, why have they disappointed? Well, when money's tight, it's this kind of stuff that is the first to go. Right, exactly. And that's a good point, too, with, with the movies. Because, yeah, I'm pretty confident, like you said, it's the economy. Because, like, in 2018, like, Dragon's Princess did, like, 16000 That was just one book. So, one one ebook, And then... They've been doing well, but then suddenly the last few years, boom, with the thing, they, they kind of dropped. In other words, books that should be doing like that, you know, 16 or so, are doing like way less, like 10 or something. Nine. This is not quite as much. I'm blessed with whatever I have. The problem is trying to do it like a full time business. It has to make money at some point. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I don't mean to be to complain. I'm just saying, I think that overall, things would be much better for all of us industry if the economy was a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. If we had like that 2019 economy. Yeah, right. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Even some of my friends are saying that, like, some of my artist friends are saying, oh, I'm just not getting booked as often now. This year has been bad. And once again, just people aren't spending the money. 